We are giving up on our side. They are pushing ever more yep. for more radical government, more government power. And There's an article that was published, excuse me for interrupting, yeah. Phil, I'm sorry, there was an article published in Breitbart just on September 7th of 2015, where Louis Farrakhan said, some of you are afraid of the Sharia, and the enemy is looking for a moderate Muslim. No, either you are a Muslim or you are not. There is no such thing as a moderate Muslim. Now, that's not me saying it. Yeah. That's not anti-Muslim yeah. uh-huh. me saying it, uh-huh. uh, as we are being accused of, of being. Uh-huh. That is Louis Farrakhan, yeah. the leader of the Nation of Islam. Yeah, one of our local uh, hosts had a uh, Muslim on, and he's supposed to be a moderate Muslim. Uh-huh. He said of Sharia, Sharia it only makes the individual better. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's what he's saying. We're trying mm-hmm. to better ourselves through Sharia. Well, I say that in you're bettering yourself. You're tearing down the only constitutional, limited Republican a republic in the world. The Absolutely. only, the last. Well said, because they're contradictory to each other. You exactly can't right. have constitutional rule of law that was the founding of this country mm-hmm. in accordance with Sharia law. It just can't happen. Well, no. no, you're right. They're not. They're not compatible at all. Here, I just want to say. Remember, uh, this is. We're going to just kind of recap uh, uh, 2015 uh, because uh, going into 2016, I mean, uh, we're in a real fight. But but the enemy may look like he's bigger than us and stronger than us. But we can take him. We can we can overcome this enemy. Remember, it was a couple, a married couple that that was in San Bernardino. Uh, and I noticed that the president and all your liberal, uh, your pundits, uh, they blame uh, the gun for for the killing of more than fourteen uh, more than fourteen individuals. Yes, it was the gun problem. They never pointed to a uh, radical Islam. Right. And they never pointed to that he was. They they point they pointed out that oh well you know he had some kind of radical and her had some kind of radical ties to to ISIS, but. But the, the truth is that being that radicalism is what led them to to go out. Matter of fact, they even had a guy, a friend, uh, buy the guns for him, which is being charged now mm-hmm. uh, w- with these federal crimes. But he went out and bought, bought the guns for him. Yeah. Not just that. You should. Uh, this is why it's important that we, I, myself, I walk, I, I look, and I'm paying attention to all my surroundings because uh, these people went to the gun show. Yeah. So you can see a, a, a man in a full whatever his garment is and a woman in a full burqa at the gun show. That's something to be con- very concerned with. Well, that, if you were at the gun show, that concerns me because I'm so heading to the gun show. Well, and if you <laughs> in fact, see, I have to leave here early today because I, I'm going to the Lansing gun show. Now, if you see somebody, <laughs> you're gonna say that's a moderate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, I know. You're gonna say, "Well, that's a moderate. We, we, we okay." By the way, I'm. Or you're just, gonna make sure that there are other people <laughs> in that in that gun show yeah. that are armed. I hope that yeah. they can well, be armed in that gun show. This might be a, a bear in the woods kind of a question, but can you? Conceal carry in a gun show, which is what? You know, that military background. Yeah. Can you conceal carry in a gun show? Uh, <laughs> certainly, you know, should be I did a, you know, I, I used to do a lot of gun shows. I, I, well, I, I know you did. Yeah, I know about that. And, and uh, you know, those concerns were uh, raised to me. You know, but I, I never thought of it. In that in that sense, you know. It, it, uh, well, you know, not that I would conceal carry, <laughs> but I would feel a lot safer if I knew that a lot of people were armed yeah. in that gun show because yeah. I believe that an armed society is a polite society. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and because I want to remind people, again, we're doing a, a recap of 2015. Remember that in uh, Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee, uh, it was at a, at, a, uh, at a recruiting center. Remember, a, a guy went in. And shot up uh, four unarmed uh, Marines yeah. in yeah. a gun-free zone. Right now, these are Marines in a gun-free zone that he had this uh, military-style weapon, and he can go. And so, one of the things that was told to uh, to the people in the military in, in in this recruiting center, they were told not to wear the uniforms. And second, they were told to close the blinds. So this is this is the liberals. 
that's in this revolution. This is why we have a counter revolution. Uh, uh, this is their way of protecting our military, yeah, our men and women on these uh, in these recruitment centers, Phil. Yeah, uh, basically uh, holding your eyes and uh, closing your ears. <laughs> yeah. That's what closing the bra- uh, drapes are, amounts to. You don't see the threat outside. You only see what's in that room. You know, and that's that's what we are. That's what we've done in, to this country. We've put ourselves in a we we're blinded to the threat yeah. because it it seems to be a small threat. A country that is you know small and uh, doesn't have much of this and that, but they are doing it from the inside. That has always been the threat to this country. Khrushchev said, "We'll bury you from within." Yeah, that's right. You know, all of the other people in the world that have ever threatened this great country have never thought of of uh, external, that we would be defeated by an external enemy. It ha- always comes from within. And I say, and I would uh, say that the threat is with the, the liberal mindset, with the progressive mindset, with the Democrat Party. Look the, what they're doing. Yeah, the interesting thing about liberals is, you know, they are so anti-gun at, uh, at the reality level, at the ground level. But they are the ones that have perpetrated a gun violence industry in our entertainment media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are saturated with gun violence on TV, and that is largely... Uh, uh, controlled by the left. That is. So, you know, w- right. does does anybody see the, 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 the disconnect between what they want us to do at the street level and, and then what they allow our children to watch hour after hour after hour? Yeah. It's, it, it's just almost obscene. Well, the, the other thing about it is, that, about the threat being from within, uh, we have also taken that out into the strategic area with the uh, the disarming, the unilateral disarming, and, and knocking down our nuclear arsenal. Yep. And and we uh, n- enough of that is not being publicized. What we do, uh, you know, outwardly in in the uh, in the, uh, the the nuclear field by taking uh, nuclear weapons and uh, reneging on the uh, on the deal with Ukraine the, in the Ukraine. You know, now we got a we got a threat out there. Yep. And yep. and so we, we we don't have any credibility. We don't ha- we can't project power anymore because we are determined to disarm unilaterally. And what's the news story today? A week after Hillary Clinton went on air saying that Donald Trump's anti-Muslim rhetoric, so to speak, as she called it, is being used as a recruitment tool. Yeah, now, yeah. today, there's a story out of uh, uh, Reuters reporting Somalia's Islamic militant group Al-Shabaab has released a recruitment film in the form of a documentary about racial injustice in the United States featuring Republican presidential camp candidate Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, that's a propaganda so, video. I- exactly. Yeah. So it, they, they're, they're taking this they're, propaganda they're so taking they can advice use from, from the Democrats. Exactly. They the ends justify advice. the means. That's, and that's what yeah. they're doing. But here, I want to mention another thing that uh, uh, in, in line with um, uh, how these people are so radical that uh, the President of the United States, um, uh, now we're just doing uh, recap in 2000, uh, 2015, he posed for a magazine uh, called Out, their 100th edition, uh, a magazine uh, called Out. Well, you can figure that out because it's called Out. <laughs> but uh, and not only was he the uh, the first president to ever pose and uh, do an interview for this magazine, but also he was, uh, Mayor, the very first heterosexual to ever pose and do an interview with this magazine. Are you sure he's a heterosexual? I mean, I, 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 I've, I've got it. I, I just, you led me to that, you know. You, you, can't, open I, I up a, you can't open up a question I, like that and yeah. not expect me to jump in with a you joke. Know, that is something to be concerned with because he did quote something uh, to them. He, uh, he, he also offered his advice on Kim Davis uh, of Amer- uh, to America. He said Davis, Kentucky court uh, clerk, uh, was believed to be jailed earlier, blah, blah, blah. But he said that uh, for re- refusing to uh, honor marriage certificates, uh, he told the magazine that 
Uh, no one is above the law. Huh. <laughs> no one is above the law. This is his That's from a man words. with the phone and a pen. Yes. Mm. And so now... Uh, not just recently, the first part of the year, we, you know, Eric Holder left his post. Eric Holder was somebody that did not obey laws that were on the right. book at all. Matter of fact, he came here in Mich to Michigan and spoke, well, here to Michigan, it took away the vote of over 3 million people that voted to protect marriage That's right. between a man and a woman. He he went before uh, governors and, and told them if they don't like a law, that they don't have to protect the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. But mm -hmm. then he going to tell them that 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 no one is above the law, mm -hmm. that she was not above the law, that she took an oath to do a job. Yeah. Now, what he means is, no one is above the law that was in there before I got in. Yeah. Now, if you break any of the laws I pushed, you, we're going to come down on you like a ton of bricks. Yeah. And look at the laws he's come down with. There has not been one reinforcement uh, of any traditional law that's on the books. Not any adherence to any of the laws that's on the books. So what we see is a dictator, and, and, and uh, he is telling you nobody's above my laws. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, Dell, you, you sent a, a article to me, House Democrats moved to well, criminalize we're do criticism that on the other of side. Islam. I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're going to well, do good. that on the other side of break. Uh, uh, let me, uh, we just have a good morning, Bruce. How you doing this morning? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Happy morning. New Year to Thank you all. You. Uh, Janice and to Phil and Dell. Janice, I hope you have a safe trip up there to uh, Thank Atlanta you. today. Thank all you right, so we much. Got a few, we got a few seconds. Go ahead, Bruce. I don't okay. mean to... Okay, well, you know, the thing to remember about progressivism is it's not just been the last 50 years. It's been, better, it's been over 100 years now. Yes. Let's, let's remember who the first progressive president was. It was Teddy Roosevelt. I got yes. you. Well, that's Teddy true. Roosevelt exactly and, right. Uh, Woodrow Wilson came in, and yeah. look what he look what he did. He just rolled back all the uh, all the gains that blacks had made during Reconstruction. Um, you know, ran the uh, the, the movie uh, 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 Birth of a Nation in the White House. Yep. Uh, all right. Was, uh, like and greeted the Ku Klux Klan. All right. Thanks, Bruce. All right, oh. Wiss. All right, Wiss. Hey, guys. Thank you. Take care. All right. Talk Happy New Year. Bye. All right. We'll see you on the other side of the break. We're going to have a great American with us, Ellis, Professor Ellis Washington.